The top performers from week seven of Valley High School football, only one 300-yard rusher, and that was from the Taps. It was Brandon Olvera, Brown, uh, Brownsville St. Joseph, 309 yards and three touchdowns. Looking good in that one. Aaron Lopez of Lopez also comes in. Mark Gonzalez of Porter still keeps putting up tremendous yardage, but still comes up short in the Battle of Southmost there. Jacob Lerma of Lyford, he looked good, and he had one of the top receivers when you look at the week seven top performers, and that would be Jacob Garza, actually uh, of Real Hondo coming up big there as well, and Danny Munoz of Pace. Who knew that Pace could get the top receiver as well? We talked about what Rio Hondo was able to do. They were playing against LaFerry. It was down to their third string quarterback, Eric Cuervo, but he looked pretty good here. He had Steven Salinas, Salinas sorry, for 40 yards for the first play of the game, but without Jesse Ramon and with, without Chris Estrada, it was tough for Rio Hondo, for uh, LaFerry to get it done. Juan Puga, however, he is the starting guy. Take, tucking and running instead, pulls up, hits Jacob Garza for the score, and then again, 37 yards to Garza. Rio Hondo led 22-3 at half, hung on for the 22-17 win, gave LaFerry their first loss of the season. The Bobcats now all alone atop District 32-3A. Take a look. It's Rio Hondo on top. It's Progresso on bottom. It's everybody else in the middle. LaFerry, Port Isabel, LaGruya, Zapata, all 1-1. One and one. Zapata, man, put up big numbers on Progresso this week. Joe, let's start with you on this and, and your thoughts on how it, it turns out. I mean, Rio Hondo had the experience against tough teams. They had lost to Ed Couch, Elsa, and Sinton and beaten everybody else and went into LaFerry and kind of dominated the game early on. Took a playoff atmosphere and, and took it to the other team, which is what you're hoping to do as you get into this part of the season. Rio Hondo came into this season as one of the top teams in that district and now they're looking at it saying okay this was the game this was the game they circled this is one they wanted to win and uh, they pulled it off big time win for Rio Hondo. Every win is huge in this district of this small what does LaFerria do to rebound uh, it looks like they can keep just bringing up quarterbacks I don't know maybe they'll go down to the eighth grade level and pick uh, up one now. <laughs> well you know I had a feeling they might be due for that down when they've been living dangerously it's a good team but they need to get healthy to compete in this district and make the playoffs which I think they probably still will. Did you see that move? Was that Puga that made that move with that little dipsy do? Mm -hmm. That dude is tough, man. Yeah. He was a wounded warrior. Too right, he got hurt and came back and sealed the game for him. Look, when the team wins, they make five turnovers. They got to be doing something extra. They, they, that means they're good because Rio Hondo turned the ball over and yeah. still won. Yes, they did. And meanwhile, in 31-3A, we've only got two Valley teams in that district, but they both played. And Lyford, we wondered how they would perform after losing to Orange Grove last week. But hey, how about this? Just coming up huge and beating Raymondville big time at home. The Bulldogs look good in this one, and they win, and now it's pretty much the same thing as 32-3A. You've got Orange Grove on top, you've got Robstown below, and you've got Lyford, Raymondville, Miller, and West Oso all in the middle, and Miller and West Oso play Lyford in Raymondville this week, so we're going to find out how this is going to shake out. Obviously, Lyford's loss to Orange Grove doesn't look nearly as bad now, Joe. Well, not near as bad as well when you're taking a look at the top team, but uh, hey, same story. Every district we're talking about now, all these teams mixed up, they're all playing each other. You know, it's playoff atmosphere already, and we're what, in week seven? <laughs> yeah, hard to believe we're already in week seven. Jacob Lerma for Lyford seems to be an equalizer for the, for the Bulldogs. He's had three or four huge games. He had 479, 362 last week, or this week, six touchdowns against Raymondville. I didn't think they were going to be able to do that. You know, I talked to uh, Coach Infante midweek, and he was kind of hopeful, but I, that was incredible. I, when I saw that score, I thought, whoa, is that right? Because Raymondville have been playing good football, you yeah. know. Uh, but things like LaFerry and like a couple of other these teams, I think the injuries and the, and the moving people around may have finally caught up with them. But they're going to get back on track, man. I still see Raymondville as a probable playoff team. 